Hello, everyone. I'm David, your SG Vice President. Thank you all for joining us in person and, of course, virtually. Um, of course, if you're tuning in via Teams, if you need captions, definitely press the three dots in the top right hand corner to turn live captions. Of course, anyone that's speaking, make sure you speak slowly, clearly, and directly into the mic for more accurate captions and avoid any loud locations or any with background noise. And of course, one speaker at a time. Today is February 9th, 2022. I call this meeting to order at 5.41 p.m. I'll have Secretary Schulte start us with roll call. Senator Shiloh? Here. Senator Brown? Senator McDowell? Here. Senator Allen? Here. Here. Senator Banerjee? Here. Senator Castellanos? Here. Senator Garcia? Here. Senator Gillis. Senator Guevara. Here. Senator Johnson. Here. Senator McFarland. Here. Senator Mosley. Senator Taylor. Here. Senator Von Boris. Here. Senator M. Here. Senator Cowell. Here. Senator Ihmer Amadu. Oh, here. Senator Schulte, here. And Senator Quibentoro. I believe we have quorum. Awesome. Let's get started today. Of course, um, COVID reminders. Definitely encourage um, all of you to get vaccinated and boosted. Of course, if you're exposed to COVID, or have any symptoms, definitely encourage you to get tested. And of course, encourage you to wear face covering to protect others as well. Today's agenda is pretty hefty. So we have executive reports, approval of minutes, unfinished business, we have R2. New business, we have two Senate appointments, one from New College and one for class. Continuing new business, we have one Supreme Court appointment presentation of the election calendar for the spring election. And then we also have a B1 college reports, shout outs, announcements, and adjournment. Let's start off with our executive reports. We can have our executive team come down and provide the report. All right, cool. What's up, Senator? Y'all having fun? Yes. Are y'all excited to be here? Yes. Okay. I hope so. Anyway, interns, say what's up, interns. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, I appreciate the excitement, y'all. Um, I'll say the intern interns did meet this past Monday. We went over internships with Sarah Sapp. She's from the Career Center. Her actual job is over internships. So that's what the interns did this past Monday. Uh, also, too, they have been planning for the first year town hall, which y'all can mark this on your calendars. It's set for February 21st from 6 to 7.30 p.m. in the Lyceum. The town hall is going to be panel-based. Um, and basically, the goal of the town hall is to get feedback from first-year students. So either a freshman or transfer students, kind of the audience that we're building off of. Uh, the interns have already created the flyer and the outline for the event. We're planning to finalize the flyer we're calling this Friday. That way we can start pubbing for the event next week. Um, confirmed panelists are Dr. With, um, Donovan, who's the Director of Transportation. Um, we have the OTP, so Orientation Transition Program, is Brittany, and then we're still waiting on confirmation from two other offices. So the President's Office and the Rec Center are the only two left that we're waiting on. Um, 
the next intern program meeting is going to be a Valentine's Day social. And the mentors will be leading that. But I did work with Casey to place the order for the materials needed for that. And then Senate and exec shadowing. All of you should have gotten an email on Monday. If you did not get an email, please let me know. But you should have got an email that shows you who got interns this year. Like I said, I went off of the Google form from last year and tried to place you with an intern that matched your interests up. Um, remember, it's your responsibility, again, to reach out to them first. Remember, it is your responsibility to reach out to the interns. They are not going to reach out to you. Um, also, too, I have started on my student service fee committee duties. It's something I don't really talk about, but I'm very excited about the committee and start working on that this year outside of just being the intern program director. So, yeah. Any questions? Hello, y'all. I'm Alexis Hawkins, co-director of diversity and inclusion, but you already knew that, I hope. Um, so my executive report is that the SGA leadership panel has been postponed till hopefully March. Um, it'll be the same date and time, or not same date and time, same day of the week and time, 6.30 to 8. Um, I would love for Senate to spread the word and be there as there will be a giveaway as well as free food. Um, we are hoping to give away two sweatshirts as well as $20 in flex and again, free food. Um, and then the SG ambassadors were wanting to table once a week for voter registration since the primaries are coming up in March 1st. Um, I would love to some senators would get involved and help out if you are a registered VDR. If not, it's very simple to get registered to be a VDR. Um, I can help out if needed. Um, as well as some of the exec members can help out too. We are most, I think most of us are. But yeah, um, the ambassadors want to do tabling once a week. I need to get logistics on that a little bit more. Um, one of the ambassadors, her name is Emma. She is going to be spearheading that. So yeah, that's my update. Any questions? Any questions for Alexis? Go ahead, Andy. Hey, Alexis. Uh, I was just wondering, I think I remember it saying there were going to be seven student uh, yes. leaders. Do we know who the leaders are, or is that like a secret? Or? No, it's not a secret. Um, did, I was. Did it say on the? I mean, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to put. No, I understand. I understand. I understand. Um, so, I'm trying to wait to see what the exact date that we get for the um panel again will be the updated panel. Um, when I get that information and confirm with all the original panelists, and hopefully I don't have to add new ones, I will get the answer to you. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions for Alexis? All right, thank you, Alexis. Let's move on to Zoe. Hi, um, so I don't have any updates other than what is in my report, um, but I would like to ask you guys to continue to pub for the UNT PD Town Hall on February 22nd at 6.30. Um, it will be in the Lyceum and there will be free food to follow. Any questions for Brazilian, go ahead, Grant. Could you send maybe the PDFs for uh, the flyers for the information or anything like that to maybe the Senate officers to be put into the Senate unofficial or just send it to us uh, just so we can maybe post it in our individual organizations, uh, group meetings and stuff like that? Yes, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Senator McDowell. I just want to shout out how cool the report is. <laughs> Thank it looks, you. It looks very cool. You can see it on screen now. Thanks. Any other questions for Zoe? All right. Thank you, Zoe. Now we have Maya, our outreach director. Um, just a few more things to add with committee updates. Um, I went in through the roster today, went through all the committee chairs, and I'm going to be contacting them tomorrow. Um, just about like getting a status update on the current status of every committee and then as well as um, figuring out we officially all made quorum for committees so woo. so um, just the last three committees need to meet um, so yeah any other questions any questions for Maya first uh, one of the first events is next Thursday February 7th um, Jade Ballroom, Lucky Charms, 12 to 2. I would love to see you all there. Thank you. All right, thank you. Now we have Bella, 
our student allocations director. Hi, everyone. Um, so getting started, Eagles Nest is funded again around 42K this year. Um, we currently have five upcoming events. They will be all posted on our socials the week of their event. Um, Ralph has funded about 12.5K this year. We currently have four applications, though. Once those process, we'll only be left with about a, a few K. That's probably like one other application. So Ralph is going to do good this semester. Uh, we currently have four pending Eagles Nest applications waiting to be sent to community as well. Um, I also have begun my student service fees obligations as JT and Devin um, will be meeting Friday for the first time. I'm just, I've been helping organizations with their applications, processing applications. Um, and then we had our resource meeting kickoff today earlier. Um, we had about 30 orgs out. It was good. Get them signed up. Um, I already had someone submit a RALP application after attending the meeting today. So went well. Um, regular resource meetings will start tomorrow and will be every other Thursday at 315 and BLB 50. Do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you so much, Bella. We have Casey, our chief of staff. Hello. So, you know, mainly most of my job is helping support them with any of their events, the logistics um, when it comes to budget and purchasing items. So that's been a big focus of mine, as well as I had a committee meeting this morning for the We Mean Green Fund, um, as well as I'm preparing for the Athletic Council meeting tomorrow um, at 1130. And then I'm also uh, have the Union Board of Directors meeting next week. Um, so that's going to be exciting to prepare for that one. Any questions? Appreciate it. All righty, then we have Devin's report, or actually, um, before we go to Devin, I believe we skipped Collins. Was there any any questions for Colin? All right, oh, we do. Go ahead, Grant. Colin's not here currently. I can but, speak for him to a certain extent. So if uh, the the TikTok, which I'm very excited for, uh, to get, uh, do we just email him? Or we want to help out. Is it open to anybody or anything like that? Yeah, I think Colin's very open to taking ideas and involvement in it. Um, he's done a really good job with social media the last, uh, I mean, three weeks since he started. And I do want to point out, um, it cut out. Hello. I do want to point out that I, I've specifically with the Instagram over the last, um, 30 days, we've had 58 new people follow us. Um, the engagement on our social media ha has skyrocketed, um, and I just want to say that Colin's doing a really amazing job at that. But yes, I would reach out to him. Um, I would just email him sjcom um, at unt.edu, and um, yeah, he should be able to get back to you. All righty. Good question. All right. Thank you, Casey. All right. All right. Devin, hello. Hi. Can y'all hear me? David? No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. Hear you. Um, well, hi, y'all. Um, you've already had a chance to read my report, so I won't go into too much detail other than what's in there. Um, but just wanted to emphasize so the staff um, had to take an extended vacation. Uh, for a couple of days last week, and uh, I did want to just say I'm very proud of the entire staff for what they were able to get done with just so short amount of time. Um, they've been really fantastic this last week with, with everything. Here's taste to emphasize that. Um, I don't know that there's too much else to add. Just some maybe context for the license for those that don't know. Uh, there was hey, pending Devin. impeachment. Yeah, can you hear me? Hey, Devin, you're glitching. Yep. Do you mind repeating a couple things? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, can you hear me? No. So, uh, you're coming in and out. All right. Well, I mean, I'll do what I can. Um, the UT Austin student government are going through, uh, we're, we're going through impeachment proceedings. Uh, their dean of students uh, stopped that process uh, it, by intervening in a way that wasn't provided for policy. So um, the speaker had sent out a letter to their assembly basically saying that 
anything regarding impeachment will no longer proceed. Um, I've, I've found that concerning uh, because I don't think that democratic institutions such as student government should be influenced in such a way. And so I did send a letter um, in support each, though not supporting the impeachment itself. That I don't think I have a right to speak on that. Uh, but supporting the assembly's right to impeach. Uh, and so that's some of the context behind that letter in case someone was confused about that. But anyways, I don't think there was too much else to add to the report. So I'll take any questions if there are any questions. Go ahead, Senator McDowell. It's, it's not so much a question, but Devin, if you want me, you were kind of cutting in and out so I can kind of summarize what you said about the UT stuff, if you want. If you. So basically what had happened is UT was having impeachment proceedings against it, its president and some of its executive staff. UT administration decided to stop those proceedings despite what the UT go student government wanted to happen. So the UT administration intervened in UT SGA affairs with, well, I won't, I won't comment on anything beyond that, but that, that's what happened is they unilaterally decided to stop the impeachment processes at, U at University, of uh, University of Texas. So. Senator Johnson. I guess this can be directed towards Andy or Devin, honestly, at this point. I'm a little confused on, is this just like, you know, the dangerous precedent that this would set for uh, students versus uh, the administration kind of thing? Or was how was this relevant to the UNT student body? So my perspective on this is sort of what you were saying. Um, I'm worried about precedent. Now, I won't say that the UNT administration would attempt anything like that. Um, I'm not going to try to, to uh, predict that. Um, but I think that a threat to any democratic institution representing the voices of students in Texas is a threat to all students in the state of Texas. And so that I would hope others would stand up for us should we experience a similar situation that I wanted to do that for the UNT student body as well. Any other questions for Devin? There's not. My report have a couple of announcements. Um, senators that don't have any headshots, please reach out to Colin to make that appointment. Um, SGA comms at unt.edu. Um, I will not be sending any more emails regarding that. So definitely partner with him so he can accommodate your schedule. Definitely I've had a lot of one on ones with prospective nominees that are now senators and then people that are up for appointment. And of course, other individuals had Senate onboardings knocked out, office hours and tabling. So super important. Y'all need to be reaching out to your Senate officers about that. They're going to be managing that from now on. I also want y'all to be using the select a Senate calendar that's on our team's channel, and I can definitely pull that up for y'all. The only people that have actually used it, it's only a small handful. That way, if there's any questions or concerns about when office hours or tabling are occurring, it's documented. I do want to give a shout out to Senator Shiloh and Senator Guevara for being the only senators to do that. We do appreciate you doing that so awesome 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 another thing is making sure that if we have any legislation please try to get it in by the soft deadline just so me and chris can provide any feedback and have it in by monday I'm trying to think anything else senate communication so one thing that i expressed in my email was um, senators using their own, I know y'all have your own separate group meeting that should be only for unofficial business. We should be conducting official business and not making decisions prior hand. I understand that y'all can collaborate and do whatever you, you need to do to advocate your um, constituents, but we should not be making 
making any decisions before a Senate, meet, a Senate meeting as a collective group. I One thing that me and Devin have been very big, uh, big on is transparency. What I do not want to happen is Senate becoming a very secretive clique that the Senate body cannot know what's going on. And if that's happening behind closed doors, that's going to be a very serious thing. And I hope we don't have to get to removal. But something that I just want to throw out there is just make sure that we're making decisions here. I encourage you to definitely prepare yourself before a Senate meeting. That's something that I've been saying throughout the whole year is prepare yourself. But if we're making decisions beforehand, that's not good. Plus, in our government document says that we should be conducting business during meetings. The second thing is, one thing is, um, Senate should be collaborative and positive. If any senator is coming to me feeling that there's toxicity, they're being harassed in any shape or form, that's going to be a serious conversation between me and that person. Um, one thing that we definitely express in our heart to heart conversation is making sure that Senate becomes a positive environment. And I definitely believe I gave you all enough autonomy and independence to do that. But if I need to be. And this is just warning for the whole Senate and I'm trying to be transparent here and hold everyone accountable. Respect or disagree respectfully. That's something that y'all put in to senators to senators expectations that we should be doing that. Um, trying to think anything else. Do we have any questions about anything? Senator Johnson. For the uh, the Senate uh, calendar, uh, one, where is that found? Uh, and two, do we need to tell the Senate officers, this is when I need to hold my meetings and then they put it in or is it just like we go in there and do it kind of thing? So I showed you that it's in our Senate channel. I posted that. Y'all should be looking at teams for any communication from me. Um, for one, thank you, Luke, for adding your your stuff in. <laughs> um, two, definitely, if you have any questions about office hours and tabling, definitely reach out to your officers. When it comes to tabling, you have to prepare five day, more than five days in advance to get that process through. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to your officers, but that's something that I will not be managing. Senator McDowell? And just to be super clear, it's under the Senate Teams chat under the files section is and it's going to be a Word doc. Thank you. Do you have any other questions about anything? If you have any questions or whatever, like to talk to me one on one. My office is always open or you can always chat with me after the Senate meeting. Um, let's move on to the next item of our agenda. Approval of minutes. Were there any concerns with minutes from last week? Let me scroll down. If there's not, they're approved unanimously. Awesome. Alrighty. I believe we have some unfinished business. We have S2022 R2 pronouns on UNT ID cards that were introduced by Senator Cowell and Senator Johnson. Let me pull that document up for y'all. Just letting you know, since we're in that second portion week, uh, the Senator, Senator Johnson. So yeah, uh, Beige and I talked uh, and read uh, some of Krista's notes or recommendations, and I just have a few amendments to make real quick. This is just for grammatic, uh, grammat grammatical uh, fixes, yep. so nothing will be changing. All right, go massive. Ahead. So I move to make amendments to the document. Okay, for the first one, uh, for the letting people know the following organizations and individuals. Uh, the UNT uh, number four needs to be UNT information system information information systems departments. And then another one to add on to there, which would be number six. 
to be the Center for Leadership and Service. And I think that's it. Your second. Sir Kent. McDowell seconds. Would someone like to recognize Krista to speak? Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, I move to recognize Krista. Senator Johnson seconds. Awesome. It's just it's not Center for Leadership and Service, it's student financial services. So Senator Johnson, would you like to amend your amendment? Financial services, please. Take the dollar seconds. Anyone object to these motions? If not, the amendments pass. Alrighty, any motions for the legislation? Senator, or Senator Schultz? Never mind. Senator Johnson? I move that we go to a period of voting. Is there a second? Senator Allen seconds. Does anyone object? All right. I object. All right, there's an objection. We can do by um, raise of hands. Anyone that would like to move into a period of voting, please raise your hand. Anyone that objects? I believe we have the necessary two thirds to move to a period of voting. Senator Schulte, if you can start roll call vote. Um, point of uh, information, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Uh, can can uh, you pull up the document again, please? I sure can. Okay, sorry. Um, it, it's really hard to see from my end. Uh, thank you. No problem. Senator Schultz, if you can start roll call voting for me, please. Senator Shiloh. Aye. Senator McDowell. Aye. Senator Allen. Aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Banerjee. Aye. Senator Castellanos. Aye. Senator Garcia. Aye. Senator Ivada. Aye. Senator Johnson. Aye. Senator McFarlane. Aye. Senator Taylor. Aye. Senator from Boris. Aye. Senator M. Aye. Senator Cowell. Aye. Senator Ihimer Madu. Aye. Senator Schulte, abstain. Senator Cleveland Toro. Aye. I believe we have a two thirds majority and the legislation passes. I'll be sent to Devin's office for his um, approval or veto. Let's move on to the next item on the agenda. We have our first um, item on the agenda. We have a Senate appointment for a new college. Um, super excited. This is the first ever applicant from the new college since it's been created. So I'm super excited. Um, is there any um, connection disclosures that any senators want to to make at this time? If any. All right, there's none. Um, hey, Nick, are you on the call? I am, yes. Awesome. So Nick, 
at this time, if you would like to kind of give um, the Senate your spiel on why um, you believe you'll be a good candidate to represent the new college, mm -hmm. provide any, liter exper any leadership experience that you may have. Yep. The floor is all yours. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, so I wrote down some notes. A uh, little bit about me. I was, I'm a transfer student into UNT, into the SPDA program at New College at the Hall Park campus here in Frisco. Um, previously was doing software engineering at another school uh, up in Indiana, and I was much, uh, fairly involved in the SGA up there, as well as in a fraternity. Um, and so these sort of procedural meetings, I kind of miss them a little bit, if I'm being honest. I haven't done too much using Robert's rules since then. But um, I'm really excited to see how SGA is a little bit different here than it was there. There it was mostly clubs and budgets. And here it sounds like y'all are doing a lot of work to affect or recommend and uh, real changes rather than just kind of figuring out whether or not the ski club gets to take eight people or nine people trip. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm very much passionate on um, transparency and hey, Nick. leadership. Yeah. Sorry. Am I talking too much? No, it's, it's, it's glitching. Oh goodness. <laughs> no, you're totally fine. You're on a roll. Sorry. Okay. To I'll turn the camera you. off and see if that gives me some more bandwidth. All righty. Okay, am I sounding a little bit better now? Yes. Also, he okay. works for IT, so super cool. I do. I work for IT at the Frisco campus, and so, yeah, uh, I spend a lot of time on campus. I talk to a lot of students, and I feel like I don't know everything that's going on, but I certainly wish that I did, and I'd love to be able to communicate some of the issues that we're facing and, you know, the things that are more relevant to us. Uh, to the rest of y'all so that hopefully we can make sure that every UNT student is getting the education that they pay for and that they deserve. All right, awesome. Is there any motions on the floor, Senator Lee? Motion to approve. I move that we go into a period of questioning. Senator around seconds. All right, Senator Luke seconded. Now we're in a period of questioning. Senator Lee, you have the first question. Hi, Nick. We're so glad to have you here. Hello. So I just want to say first off, hello. Um, my question yep. is, so um, the Frisco campus is different us, at least from what I understand, you know, in being physically far away from us. A lot of us haven't been, I haven't been to Frisco, but um, if there's one thing or any notable things that you think are specific to the culture of Frisco campus that you can specifically advocate for, um, if you could just kind of expand upon that. Sorry, it's not wording it well, but. I think Any I specific understand. issues that you think Frisco has, yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think the thing that makes UNT Frisco kind of unique compared to the Denton campus, and this is all from a rough understanding, I don't have any numbers to back me up on this, um, is that it, we're very much, I see a lot of non-traditional students at UNT Frisco, um, people who are um, you know, older than the traditional college student age, people who are either returning to college after an attempt previously or going to college for the first time ever, uh, just later in life than the average college student, as well as uh, we are an exclusively commuter campus. We don't have any dorms or anything. And so I think a lot of that kind of doesn't define the culture, but I think that plays a big role in it. And I think that that one of the major issues that um, I kind of talked to a lot of people about when I was going around getting my 25 signatures um, was we pay a lot of the same fees that Denton campus students do um, without receiving equal treatment, I think might be how I say it. And not, I don't think by any purpose, we're not being purposefully excluded, but from anything. And I know that anything on the Denton campus, we're welcome to go and experience and enjoy ourselves, but um, it's the access, I think, that really is the key issue that I want to work on. That answers my question. Thank you. Any other questions or motions on the floor? Senator Johnson. 
I move that we go to a period of closed questioning. Or sorry, discussion. Is there a second? Senator Brown. Senator Brown. Taylor. All righty, let's move and second it that we're in a period of closed discussion. Um, Nick, at this time, I'm asking you to leave the call. Um, I'll have my Sergeant Arms um, request to you join after the Senate has deliberated. Um, and yeah. Cool. I'll keep my eyes open for the message. Thanks, y'all. All right. Thank you. All righty. I believe um, Nick has left the call. Um, Senator Johnson, you have the first discussion point. So honestly, I think we should just let him in knowing that turning off his camera would fix his mic. I think that was obviously very brilliant and that should be grounds for Senator enough. Uh, but also I liked how he brought uh, the perspective of a college that again is going through the fees that Denton students pay for, but Frisco students again are seeing it on a regular basis and the access I think he brings again an unrepresented seat and a representative who knows and sees what the students are going through. So I think he'd be a welcome addition to the Senate. Senator Morris. I just have a question. So seeing as he would be a representative of the Frisco campus, would he be joining virtually each week or would he be attending these meetings in person? Not that that plays a huge role. I'm just curious. So he'll be a representative for the new college. Um, so to give you a little bit more perspective on how that works is he's representing the college and the difference between that and the Frisco campus is you would actually represent the actual campus itself. It's a little confusing. Essentially, you're representing students that actually have physical classes at the Frisco campus. The commission knows a little bit, hopefully we'll know more or has discussed that whole conversation. But um, something to definitely express is a hybrid option. As long as hopefully the next administration continues to do that, um, I encourage him to do whatever platform he would, would work best for him. I think it's leaning towards to be more virtual since he works and has classes at Frisco. I don't want Senate to be a place that's not accessible to any student that has any transportation issues or anything like that. Of course, the Senate chamber is always an option, but I'm going to leave that to that and of course any senator that's experienced anything like that we have virtual option for a reason um not only to keep y'all safe in terms of covid but also if there any if you're out of town or anything you can still participate virtually um did you have questions senator mcdowell go ahead yeah just to just to make sure that we're not m making our decision based on that uh information um and a little bit on the frisco New college thing, it's dumb. There's no reason for it. He's representing the people at Frisco, more or less, whereas a Frisco seat would be representing the campus. It's kind of a weird distinction, but it's, it's, it. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we'll just transition into just new college just to make it simpler. It's, it's hard to explain, but yeah. All right, any other discussion points or motion? Senator Lee? Sorry, I just have another quick question. So in a many, that would be the commission. It wouldn't be like a bylaws thing that we could do? Um, there is in the Constitution that lays out one seat specifically to the Frisco campus. So just to put it in perspective, it's like something similar saying one seat would be allocated to Discovery Park. Does that make sense? Yeah. Senator McDowell? And yeah, as far the the com the commission is working on amending the constitution, and that is included in in our amendments. Um, just two seats to New College, and not worrying about the campus as a whole. Any other? Uh, Senator Allen would like to make the motion to bring this to a vote. Is there a second? Senator Johnson seconds. Does anyone object? All right. Period of voting. Senator or Se Secretary Schultz, if you can help us with that, that'd be awesome. Senator Shiloh? Aye. Senator Brown? Aye. Senator McDowell? Aye. 
Senator Allen. Aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Banerjee. Aye. Senator Castellanos. Aye. Senator Garcia. Aye. Senator Guevara. Aye. Senator Johnson. Aye. Senator McFarland. Aye. Senator Taylor. Aye. Senator Van Boris. Aye. Senator M. Aye. Senator Cowell. Aye. Senator Ihimir Madu. Aye. Senator Schulte. Aye. Senator Quibentoro. Aye. I believe we have unanimous yes, consent. So the appointment is confirmed. Point of information. Yes. How do I request that he? Um, I think I did that. Okay. Um, I request that he rejoins the chat. Um, type in his name again. Okay. Hey, Nick, how you doing? I'm great. How are y'all? Doing good. Congratulations. You are the first ever center to represent the new college. Woohoo! Yay. Thanks, guys. Super excited. It. All right, now that you are appointed, now you have full procedure rights. You can definitely participate and use um, some of that Robert's Rules of Order skills that you have. Woo woo. All righty. Next up, I believe we have another Senate appointment. We have from the um, Kaylin Ruiz, nominee for class. If Kaylin can come to the front, that'd be awesome. Would the Senate like to disclose any connections with Kaylin, if any? Oh, a lot of hands. All right. Um, let's do Senator Van Voris. I have the honor of being in two classes with Ms. Ruiz this year. Um, so I see her every single day of the week. Um, and we talk quite a bit. And I would say that we've developed quite a, quite a friendship since the beginning of this semester. All righty. Um, Senator Taylor. I as well have classes with um, Ms. Ru Ruiz, but I don't think it's detrimental to me voting. Alrighty, Senator uh, McDowell. Um, I've had some tangential experience with Ms. Ruiz over her advocacy work, um, but nothing that I believe would impair me in my decision. Alrighty, any other disclosure, connections, past or previous? Alrighty. All right, Caitlin, um, please, this is an opportunity for you to give your little spiel to the Senate why um, you believe you'd be a great um, asset and be the best advocate for class. Definitely express any past leadership experience. The floor is all yours. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, hi, my name is Kaylin Rees. I am a double major for the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences in psychology and political science with a minor in criminal justice, and I'm achieving my legal certification. So yeah, it's a lot going on, basically class right here, representative. Um, I just wanna firstly say like, thank you guys for everything that you guys have been doing. SGA has been something that I've wanted to do forever. I actually filled out an intern application, but never submitted it, which is getting to my next point. I'm a non-traditional student. I have never lived on campus. I currently live in Frisco, Texas. I've actually attended some classes at the new campus in a new college. And essentially that kind of was detrimental towards my uh, involvement on campus because as a commuter student, I felt like because I was a non-traditional student, I couldn't really proper, properly get myself out there. A bunch of psychology in my head was just t telling me that I couldn't um, attend organizations like as easier. Therefore, I should just focus on my classes more and not try to like project myself out there. So 
I was obviously very wrong. I mean, I'm still a commuter student. And um, I had the pleasure of talking with both President Skinner and Vice President uh, Munoz. And they both, you know, spoke with me regarding my advocacy, obviously, with the USPAAC, the UN, uh, UNT Student Professor Alliance Against COVID. We did protest work. I'm the co-organizer for the protest, the mass drive. And I actually am really excited to say that we are continuing to raise funds to make sure that every student on campus has access to a high quality mask to ensure that they do not um, continue the spread of COVID and they just keep themselves safe, essentially. We're also working on legislative work and we're working actually with a coalition for all Texas universities to alliance each other um, regarding uh, COVID safety procedures and legislation within their own respectable student body governments. Um, so why I think I'm a great asset to this is I actually have a lot of legislation um, experience and work. Uh, throughout high school, I was in youth and government. I organized a lot of protests. I organized a lot of advocacy events and such and so as. And obviously I am a political science student, so I do have you know that opportunity to be able to be right there, your right hand man, if you need any questions on policy, things like that, like that's literally my education. But I also want to talk about the psychological perspective of why I feel like I'm a really good asset. I'm super advocate, like I have a huge advocate when it comes to mental health. Um, as a woman of color, I feel like I also want to raise those voices and amplify those voices that we have. A lot of people of color and women of color have a lot of um, internal pressures that they feel they can't really express. There's a lot of women on campus who I think could benefit from workshops and things like that that I want to be able to put together. I want to get involved in committees, external and internal committees. I feel like it's really important to amplify uh, as many opportunities as possible that I'm given. Uh, also, because I am a non-traditional student, I know the psychology that students have who are also non-traditional students on campus. I want to be able for those students to feel as propelled as possible to be able to do anything they want on campus, get involved, get excited, because that's what we do as, as, at SGA. We're trying to utilize every single resource possible to make sure that our students are the happiest that they can be while also pursuing an education. Um, but yes, as I said, I, I, my le legislative skills regarding that, I was in youth and government, so I do know how to work on bills. So if you guys ever need help with that or ever wanted to get the ball rolling on something, an issue that you wanted to, I'm right here for you guys. And I would love to work with you guys, each and every one of you regarding those things. I feel like it's so important to like speak with one another, be transparent, and also just form friendships that I think are going to last us a really long time. Um, that's kind of all I have. But uh, like I said, thank you guys so much. I'm really excited. Alrighty, any Oh, all right, Senator Johnson. I'd like to go, to, I move that we go to a period of questioning. Senator Taylor seconds. We got your second. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Senator, it's been moved and seconded that we're going to a period of questioning. Senator Johnson, you have the first question. First of all, amazing credentials that follow with you, Thank the you. skills necessary to be a Senator and all that. In fact, you might be a little too overqualified to be a senator. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. I, I think that, um, ironically, that's something that I spoke with um, Vice President David David on. Um, I, I felt that because I have so much on my back, that would become intimidating or it would make me seem unauthentic. And I'm just like asserting myself like, hey, <laughs> you guys have to let me in. No, I feel like there's a lot to learn. I still, there's so much about campus, despite the fact that I've been here for so many years. I am a junior. Despite me knowing a lot, there's a lot of internal things that I want to change. You know, I still don't know half of the knowledge that you guys have regarding internal um, internal workings of SGA. There's always something that I can learn, even whether it be through personal experiences or through the way that campus works. I want to I don't think I'm overqualified. If anything, I, I think that I'm just the right amount of qualified to be able to work my hardest to ensure that SGA propels. My question is, um, do you, so during the protest, uh, there was obviously, I don't know if anyone saw it, uh, the one protester on top of the parking garage with the speaker. Kelly? Kelly, yes. You can say her name. I, I didn't know her name. Oh, okay. Got it. So uh, who, I, I, I might have community. I didn't really hear what they were saying, maybe a bad microphone, but it <laughs> seemed like they were uh, advocating for in-person classes, which was kind of contradictory to yeah. the protest. So my answer is, how would you deal with maybe a constituent or another person who may disagree with you in a sense? I mean, that's one of the beautiful things about being on a very diverse campus, isn't it? Is that you're going to have opposing viewpoints. And one of the remarkable things I find about that, instead of just getting really aggressive about people not, you know, having the same ideals that you have or views, get to know that person and ask them what's going on. Like, why do you feel this way? Chances are you actually learn something from that exchange. 
and also be able to build on a stronger argument for whatever you endorse or support. With Kelly, it's very interesting because she did that with the intention of making a TikTok. And she actually made the TikTok, posted it, and spread a lot of misinformation that misled a lot of students on in Texas campuses throughout all different kinds of univers uh, universities and as well as countrywide. And I'm pretty sure she probably has some like world outreach, I don't know. But she essentially said that we were protesting exclusively for online um, school, which is completely false and correct. She also thought that um, Professor Armentour, who spoke in favor, she's a tenured professor, she spoke in favor of our um, protest. She also thought that she was a uh, political radical leftist who is on the FBI watch list. Like I said, I I honestly, I laughed a lot. And no, not, that's the, even the better part. Um, I just want to make sure that we're, our conversations about qualifications and why she should be a senator should not be talking about other students. Yeah. Extremely inappropriate. I want to remind the Senate what happened last time. So let's make sure that it's strictly about the appointment and about other people. We should be representing people, not criticizing anyone else. Just throwing that out there. But let's make sure we're back on page. Absolutely. I was going to get back to the like round point. I apologize for that. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is she is a well-known figure on campus. However, she has an opposing viewpoint. And with that, I have to say that you just have to respond back properly, respectfully with people who have those opposing viewpoints and just remind the general public that's not true kind of debunk those things, those cases, those claims one by one, because there are going to people be people on campus who have opposing viewpoints. That's we have like what, I believe 50,000 people on campus students wise, like it's bound to happen. Like it's it's going to happen. So with those students like that, because I, of my protest and my like, as you were saying within your question, what you know, what you would do with students like that. I honestly believe in one killing them in, with kindness and with evidence. I think that's the, the best thing that you can do, especially as a senator, if I were to be appointed, that's the way that I would keep approaching it, especially because that's you're you're in a position that's very very important. You know. Wonderful answer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Senator McFarland. Hi. Um, you seem very qualified. I would be remiss if I did not ask, what problems do you see with UNT's uh, handling of mental health um, that you would like to solve if you were in Senate? I think one thing that I feel the campus could do better on is recently we've obviously had the issue that immunocompromised and disabled and immunodeficient people are running into regarding COVID. That's a huge mental health aspect and stressor that students on campus are very much feeling. It's really, really um, difficult for them to be able to navigate a campus life while on top of their school, also on top of the fear of getting COVID. That's kind of where I have been working a lot on right now, obviously within the USP AAC, is we want to make sure that students who are immunocompromised, immunodeficient, or, and or disabled are able to not have that mental stressor and have those online options. That's one, that's one mental health issue that I, I see. Another one that I also see is that a lot of students on campus, they feel like um, there's kind of like a restraint on them to be able to get help, to talk to people. I think I wanted to, like one thing that I really wanna do is initiate a program where we have like safe people that you can be able to talk to th about things and like, be able to, you know, approach like the hotline and stuff like that without fear of that, you know, that maybe backlash or maybe um, dealing with repercussions of such. Like just being able to open the conversation more to safe mental health essentially is what I think that UNT could, you know, progress better on. Great answer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Senator Cowell, did you have a question? Um, I, I was going to move that we go to a period of closed discussion if there weren't any more questions. Is there a second? McDowell seconds. Anyone object? Alrighty. We're now in a period of closed discussion at this time. If you take your belongings and set um, come find you. You can just be outside of fuzzies on the third floor, not the second floor. Sure. Alrighty, um, 
Senator Cowell, I believe you um, you have the first discussion point. Okay, um, I hope y'all can hear me all right. Uh, so she seemed. Uh, I think Grant said it pretty apt, like almost overqualified, super passionate, lots of experience, and I think she would be a great senator. Um, I, the only thing that's kind of like sitting in the back of my mind is uh, it almost seems like she was, she's maybe more suited towards activist work. I mean, obviously she's working with the protest and uh, the mass, mass Foundation. I'm saying that incorrectly, but um, so I, I'm just worried that some of her other, like super, you know, noble things that she's working on might get in the way of her, her duties to, you know, represent such such a diverse college as class. But I, I do think she also, you know, has that experience. So, so that's my point. Senator Shiloh. Yes, I would just like to comment that I. I mean, I would argue that being a senator is being an activist or an advocate for the people on campus. So I definitely don't think that um, it would stand in the way of anything she was doing. If anything, I think it would propel her to be um, to put that passion into legislation and getting things done on campus. And I specifically feel strong about um, whatever voting on it or whatever because she's a woman of color and she's doing a lot of things for her community and for underrepresented communities. Senator Taylor. I really love that she already has ideas and has a plan of action from day one when she starts, if she is appointed as a senator. Senator McDowell. Um, I would I would just like to point out, I don't think this this matters either way, but if she were to be appointed, class would be full. There would be no more open class seats. Woo. Senator Allen. I would just like to say, if there are no more points of discussion about this, I would like to move to a period of voting. Senator Johnson seconds. Does anyone object? All right, we're in a period of voting. Senator or Secretary Schulte, if you can help us out with, with that. And Senator Shiloh. Aye. Senator Brown. Aye. Senator McDowell. Aye. Senator Allen. Aye. Senator Lee. Aye. Senator Banerjee. Aye. Senator Castellanos. Aye. Senator Garcia. Aye. Senator Guevara. Aye. Senator Johnson. Aye. Senator McFarland. Aye. Senator Taylor. Aye. Senator Van Boris. Abstain. Senator N. Aye. Senator Cowell. Aye. Senator Baker. Aye. Senator Ihimiramadu. Aye. Senator Schulte. Aye. Senator Cribentoro. Aye. I believe we have a two thirds majority and we have now Senator Reese representing the College, the College of Liberal Arts Social Sciences. Um, if you wouldn't mind telling our new fellow Senator that she was appointed awesome. And we can have our next uh, Supreme Court nominee, come to the front, please. And then I'm just going to wait a little bit. Yeah, so um, just giving my usual disclosure, um, I don't really think there is one. To the best of my knowledge, there's not really any connection 
with a member of the executive branch. I didn't know of Inara before our interview. Um, so yeah, pretty quick, pretty easy uh, disclosure. Uh, this is Inara, and she is one of our Supreme Court nominees. Take it away. We'll wait for our Senator Reese and Senator Banerjee before we begin. We appreciate everyone being patient. Five years later, they walked in. Congratulations. Senator Reese, you can take your place up here in the front. I think there might be four, that front table or the third row or back here. Just make sure that we're socially distant. All right. If we can get back in order, that'd be awesome. Now you, all righty. So, um, Senator Reese, now you have full procedural rights and you can participate and vote. We have our Supreme Court appointee. Let me put that on the screen. Yes. New college vote on the last. Okay, they did. Yes. Okay, thank you. Just making sure. All right. Everybody. Um, yes. Okay. You can begin and give your little spiel. Yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to disclose that I did meet Inara earlier this evening while I was waiting for the meeting to start. Uh, so I have met her briefly. I don't know if that yes. has any problems, yeah. but <laughs> any disclosure of like connection oh. means more of like you have a class it's in like conflict of interest to oh, say at least if you just sorry. chat that that's not really i do appreciate you being transparent you have the floor all right okay um i'm inara as you see up there um i'm a journalism major so i kind of wrote down everything i wanted to say it's the only way i can actually do things um so if it sounds like really put together it's that's why i don't really talk like that in real life um I'm a journalism major. I'm a senior graduating in May, hopefully, if it goes, if it goes the way it's going. Um, I thank you all for allowing me to be here today. I know it's, it's COVID, it's crazy, but I'm here. Um, so uh, growing up, I've always had the passion for helping people in every way that I could. And I know it sounds cliche, but it's the easiest way to put it. Um, when I reached uh, middle school, I was asked to choose three electives for that year. As I was deciding the last one, I came across something called peer tutor, which was essentially volunteering and working with students with severe disabilities. Um, considering how completely unaware I was of what that consisted of, I selected it, um, not knowing how transformative that would be for me. Um, from the first moment I walked into that classroom, it was just an overwhelming feeling of comfort that where I was in that moment was exactly where I wanted to be for like the rest of my life. <laughs> um, so. Uh, since then, I chose peer tutor every chance I could all throughout high school. Uh, but then during my senior year of high school, um, I asked the teacher that was really in charge of the whole um, program, kind of like what happens to these students after they graduate, because they don't really get the same chances of college or jobs or careers like we do. Um, and really, there was nothing out there. So I created the club. It was just all local called uh, the You, Me, and Us Club, which was essentially a social interaction club. Um, it was outside of school hours, so every time, like on the weekend, we'd go bowling or like, I don't know, occasional dinners, so they I guess, less than. That was essentially what I wanted to do. Um, this led me to discover what I wanted to do professionally, where I could make more of a difference. I wanted to essentially advocate and bring awareness to the challenges people in the world were facing and how they could be helped more. These students were part of that. That led me to also take the LSAT twice, so that's another story. Um, from 2018 to 2020, I lived in London to help care for my late grandmother who suffered from vascular dementia. I spent there while continuing my degree online with UNT. While it was a challenging experience, it was the most rewarding. I not only learned about the UK government system and healthcare system, but more importantly, I learned compassion and resilience, which is invaluable in my opinion. Um, I lead with passion, helping others and being a benefit of others is what brings me immense joy. If I am confirmed, 
I vow to lead and listen with empathy and compassion. Um, as the incredible late Justin Ginsburg once said, fight for the things you care about, but do in a way that will lead others to join you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, Senator, go ahead. I move that we go to a period of questioning. McDowell seconds. Any objection? We are now in the Andy of the first. So first of all, amazing, amazing, all your credentials, your background, obviously your the passions there, and I love that. I kind of have two questions. Uh, first, how did you find out about the uh, uh, Supreme Court vacancy? Um, on Twitter, actually. I'm part of um, Agency. It's a, a student-led PR firm, and um, and Colin's a part of it as well. So I was about to follow him on Twitter, and then I saw he was part of SGA, so I that led me to this. So I applied. I honestly didn't know there was a Supreme Court for the school. Um, I'm a commuter, and I live in Louisville, so I'm not as involved on campus. But this is like the most, like the perfect thing I could even think of. Uh, and then also, uh, first uh, again, my heart goes out for you to going out taking the LSAT twice. Yeah, I have thank you. still have to take mine. <laughs> um, so obviously, with the Supreme Court, you have to kind of be, or you have to be impartial right. and decide on the facts, the case precedents precedents going forth. Do you think you could be unbiased if it disagreed with the executive or the Senate or whoever disagreed with it? You could lay a fair and impartial. Uh, verdict? I I like to think so. I'm a very opinionated and passionate person, um, but I feel like when it comes down to the facts, I like to break everything down. And I feel like the only way to get through to people and get, um, get knowledge of other people's opinions is just to break it down and just talk about it and not get too passionate like I do. But I'm, I'm working on it. But yeah, just talk, yeah, talk through it pretty much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, very, very good speech. Uh, you seem very prepared. Can, can I ask, have you read um, the Constitution, bylaws, uh, the governing documents, I guess? I have skimmed through it. I did uh, skim through it before my interview and then last night because I just wanted to prepare as much as I could. I did skim through it. I don't have it memorized, but I have a general idea of. Oh, you don't need to okay, memorize good. it. <laughs> I don't. I have a good idea of it. Yeah, it's, so. it it's, it's, it's a very lengthy document, but you're familiar with it? Yeah, I'm pretty familiar. That's wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Any other questions or motions? Yes, our latest sentence. Hi. So you spoke so eloquently, and I'm Thanks. so excited with everything that you have already done. You're, you're very promising. My main question to you is, if elected Chief Justice, what's something that you're really passionate about that you would like to work on? Um, I think Chief Justice has already been chosen. Oh, no, Chief Justice. Uh, sorry, set okay. appointment. Uh, Something that you'd be passionate if elected. Um, like you said, I liked how you put on the mental health aspect of things. I know this last year, my mental health has been, especially off the LSAT. The LSAT kind of like put me down all the way. Um, <laughs> but I think um, obviously mental health, and I think a lot of accommodations, people with disabilities. I actually have a friend with a disability, and she's not accommodated at all. The, the, like professors are telling her to like, it's 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 insane. It's a whole long story. So I think just like accommodations, the people who need accommodation, rather to other things that we are giving accommodation to, if that makes sense? Yeah, okay. thank you. That answers my question perfectly. Yes, go ahead. I have a motion. If there are any, any more questions, I motion we go to a period of closed discussion. McDowell, seconds. Okay. Any objections? Okay, we will now enter a period of closed discussion. I'll just ask that you exit the room. All right, bring my stuff or can I just leave it here? Whatever you prefer. All right, I'll just leave it here then. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Senator Manager, or Speaker, they're supposed to take their stuff. I, is that like a, isn't that an encouragement? Because, or is it procedural? So they don't have to come back. I know, so they don't. Like, yeah. Do you, should I clarify to her? I mean, they already left. So. <laughs> it, it's not like procedural. Anyway, order, I guess. It, I guess it's. I guess it is. I mean, they don't have to. Anyway, guys, I would say, yeah. Well, we're in a period of closed discussion, so 
if anyone wants to make a motion to go into a roll call vote, we can do that. And don't speak out of turn, please. I know it's me, but. I love that she's passionate, she's prepared, and she's ready. Yeah, Senator Johnson. Also, I like how Andy asked the question if uh, she has glimpsed or looked over the Constitution. Some justices haven't done that. We still voted them in. Uh, so I think that stands to uh, accounts to her character as a wonderful uh, appointee she would be. Senator Lee. Um, Senator Garcia has his hand raised. I just wanted to help. Thank you. Um, Senator Garcia, go ahead. So one of her issues on um, accessibility and disabilities, um, that's, a, that's an issue that's very serious and that's something that I take to heart. Uh, my partner is disabled and, you know, I just love her awareness for issues such as those and I think that she would be a great fit for the Supreme Court. Okay, Senator Cleveland Toro, go ahead. Uh, Madam Speaker, if no one has any like points of contention with the nominee, I think it might be prudent for us to go into a period of voting. So I move for I move we I move a period of voting. Senator Van Voor seconds. Okay. We are going to go into period of roll call vote. And since Secretary I'll take the roll call vote. Okay, so on the acceptance of our nominee, Senator Shiloh. Uh, Senator McDowell. Aye. Senator Allen. Aye. Senator Lee? Aye. Senator Banerjee? Aye. Senator Castellanos? Aye. Senator Garcia? Aye. Senator Guevara? Aye. Senator Johnson? Aye. Senator McFarland? Aye. Senator Taylor? Aye. Senator Ruiz? Aye. Senator Von Boris? Aye. Senator M? Aye. Senator Cowell? Senator Baker? Aye. Aye. <laughs> I am so sorry in advance for butchering this. Senator Yamato? <laughs> was it that bad? Hi. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Senator Winston? Okay. I'm through. Um, Senator Cleveland Toro. Cleveland I know your name. I appreciate that. Uh, hi. <laughs> Senator Brown, how did you vote? Uh, I believe my uh, stream had frozen. Uh, I vote aye. All right, I believe we have a unanimous vote and we have another Supreme Court justice. Awesome. All right. On the court. Devin, do you have that number? How many vacancies left do we have in the court? I think we should be full. Nope. So two more. We'll give you the we'll, we'll send an email. All righty, let's move on to the next item. Um, congratulations. Next up, we have a presentation of the election calendar by Election Board Commissioner Yassir. 
Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Speaker? Yes. So is, are we going to be voting on this or are we just going to be uh, listening to it? I believe. Yes. Our, uh, Senator Clementor moves to recognize President Skinner. McDowell seconds. All righty. Devin, was there a second, right? Yeah, okay. Devin, go ahead. It's OK, I need to exercise them. Uh, so um, my understanding, and if Chris wants to can, my understanding is the Senate would not vote on the election calendar. When I was a senator, my understanding is there was an attempt to change a part of the election calendar. We were essentially told that we didn't have the authority to do that, and they essentially went on with what was originally on there. Uh, that's the precedent. Uh, I did take a look at election code and the bylaws. I couldn't find anything in either that gave the Senate explicit authority to approve the election calendar. That's my understanding of the situation. Um, and that's about all I can give you. If Krista has additional context or anything, no. So yeah, that's that's the information I've got. So no, okay. Awesome. All righty, let me pull up calendar. There's been some updates, so bear with me. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I believe there should be more updates, correct? Um, just one more. Just one more I forgot to make before I sent that, but that's about it. All righty, but the floor is all yours. All right, thank you. Um, hi, guys. I'm so happy to be here. So this is the current election calendar. So. Um, can you scroll all the way to the bottom for a moment, please? So I have made a key just so it's easy to look at and easy to navigate. So um, before we go to the calendar, I'm just going to say what all of them mean. I know y'all can read, but I'm here. So with the everything that's indicated in green, that basically says like when the application opens, when it closes and eligibility check-ins, um, spring break in gray, informational sessions in red, election code meetings in blues, campaign week one in orange campaigning week two and when voting opens in purple and runoff election in yellow so basically um, the applications will open on the 14th at 8 a.m and they will remain open until march then potential information and potential candidate informationals will be beginning um, the first week of March and the last day of February and there's various timings. I'm having them every single day, two of them in the evening, two of them in the afternoon. And I think one in the morning, I believe it could be wrong, but all of these meetings will be hybrid um, just to accommodate everybody. And I chose these timings based off not only my availability, but hoping that everybody can be able to make at least one of each election code and potential candidate. Then um, the applications close March 4th at 5 p.m. And then um, Dr. McGuire will have a grade and eligibility check in that weekend. And then we'll have the election codes the second week of March. Again, same thing. I kind of trust various timings so it can be um, I can be as flexible and open to everybody. And again, these will also be virtual and um, in person. So a hybrid model just to accommodate everybody. And on Friday, sorry, the screen makes it a different shape. Um, March 11th, that is the last day to pass referendum. Then after that, we have spring break. And we also have another election code meeting at 8 a.m on the Monday we get back from spring break and then at 9 a.m. when that election code meeting is over, then y'all can start campaigning or whoever chooses to run. The reason, and I'm gonna be very transparent, the reason why I chose to do that is because I don't want anybody to have an unfair advantage for campaigning over spring break because that's just not fair towards anybody and it'll just be whoever knows the most people and I wanna make this as fair as possible. And I've also changed the campaigning weeks from one to two weeks and we're gonna have 
um, different events such as like a presidential town hall and a watch party. Sorry, I do need glasses. I know I made this, but I do need glasses. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. We're going to have a Q&A hour with the exec candidates just so if anybody has questions about what they're running for and what they're holding, like just what they're people can ask um, if we can scroll a little bit more. We're going to have uh, meet the senators, of course, and then we're also going to have a mingle hour with the senators and the exec ticket, kind of like a more appropriate version of like a cocktail hour. You don't have to dress fancy, but just so people can talk and discuss and people can ask you questions personally and just have a more um, intimate connection and interaction with y'all. Then on the 26th, candidates can no longer remove their name from the ballot. They'll probably I'll change up to 5 p.m. I definitely that's one of the things I need to change. Then we also have the second week of campaigning, and that is also when voting opens at 8 a.m. on the 28th. And I've also set up election board meetings. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I get an election board. So if y'all know anybody, please encourage them to sign up. But I have about six election board meetings set in stone or four, two of them in the first week, two of them in the second week, so we can go over complaints that we receive. I've had those set in stone so we can all just have set time so nothing is last minute, nothing is abrupt. Then um, another event we have is the presidential debate. That one, it's not obvious on the screen, but when you have the PDF version, it's more prominent. That one is italicized because that date is not going to move. The other events may be subject to change, whether it's timing or room, but the presidential debate is not going to change. It is going to remain that date. So I just wanted to keep that in mind because that is probably the most like stressful event for anybody who is running. And we also are going to have another election board meeting. And then on the 31st, it probably won't be in and out, but kind of like a night where we can pass out food and just like have incentives for students and they can only get the food when they learn about what's going on because if they're not going to come to us we're going to come to them and then voting closes at 5 p.m on april 1st no that is not a joke um sorry <laughs> um and then we have runoff campaigning that begins April 4th, April 4th, that's when it begins. And then it looks right, but I'm, it's more, you're, it's easy to read when it's like not on the screen, I promise guys. And then fifth, yeah, fourth and fifth runoff campaigning, voting begins at 8 a.m. and closes at 5 p.m. the next day. There is a lot of time before we are doing it ahead just because spring break and finals and I really took that into consideration and I also want to ensure that the new administration has enough time for exec transitions and to make those as great as possible and I think I might have missed one thing that I need to change but that's all I had unless I missed something would someone like to recognize Krista? Senator Lee seconds. Hi, right, Krista. Uh, there's one behind you. I think the change you're referring to might be that voting would close on Thursday at five. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yes, it will actually close on Thursday, the same night. We're going to have whatever food, maybe in and out. I don't know, but yes. That's right. It's going to close Thursday at 5 p.m. That way we don't have to come. Me or my election board does not have to come in on a weekend. Again, I'm very considerate. So if anybody wants to be on the election board or you know someone, let me know. All right. Um, all right. We have Senator Johnson. So for the potential candidate informational, is that just for anyone who wants to run or is there going to be like this day's for presidents, this day's for senators, this day's for this? Anyone. Oh. Um, I just made sure it's very open because if someone is not available for like the day that president's happening, then I don't want them to feel discouraged. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Senator Lee. So I have a 
kind of two-part question, mainly just because I'm unfamiliar with the process. Um, so the potential candidate informational and the electrical meeting are required for candidates, correct? Okay. And then if a candidate, say they're really, really freaking busy and they can't go at, to any of those, is there a contingency plan like they email you or? Yes, of course. Um, that's also another reason why I tried making it as accessible because I hope that when people see this calendar and see how often I'm doing this, I hope that they can feel comfortable coming to me because I understand we all work, we have classes. I'm more than willing to accommodate to anybody who can um, make these timings. Thank you. Of course. Senator Reese. Hi. Um, so you mentioned about how you're taking uh, uh, is either appointments or applications for the election board committee. Is that what you said? Could you give me a brief like summary of how you would approach kind of like kind of like uh, like to be able to fill in those those that those seats that you would like people for you to join the election board committee? Could you give me like a brief summarization of the, like assignments and duties that they would do? Because I really do want to like I potentially ask around the political science or just class in general or different like uh, students to fill in those seats because I, I can tell that there's a heavy load that this provides for you. So to alleviate that. Would someone like to recognize Devin? Senator Lee, or sorry, Senator Allen. Senator Allen would like to, rec to recognize uh, President Skinner. McDowell seconds. All righty, Devin. So this is one area that has no reference in governing documents, including the election code. My understanding, and again, Krista, please correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is that presidents is the president nominates the election board members and then is confirmed by the Senate. Is that yes? So um, I'll be the one making those nominations. Um, the application is just the same as it was for uh, Bachtaver, um, but Bachtaver is going to be included in that decision making process. So I'm not going to to exclude, mm -hmm. but um, just so everyone understands the mechanism of action here, it's going to be that same application for centrality. Um, people will apply for the election board. I'll receive them. I'll work with Bob Tauber. We'll try to schedule interviews and then we'll try to get them to the Senate. As we can once we get those applications. Perfect. So basically um, just if, if it's possible, could you email me like some of the links that the, mm -hmm. it could refer students to if they do yeah. want to? Yes, um, we actually got an Eagle Mail request in. Um, I think it's still being reviewed, okay. um, but it should have all those. Uh, it should have all those links. Uh, so once it's sent out, everyone will have that. Perfect. Um, all right. I can send it to you. If you've got someone in mind, I can send it to you tonight. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Okay. I think I have someone in mind who might be interested okay. in something like this. Yeah, I can do that. All right. Yeah. Thank you so but much. Be on the lookout for that email, though, if it, if it was that. Tomorrow. Oh, okay. I'll just refer them um, to the, go to their email then, I guess. <laughs> they can. Um, I don't know. Everyone checks in. There's I get a million emails so it could get lost. Um, if you know someone that's interested, I can get you a link directly. And we can Thank you so there. much. Yeah. And um, just something else to add. I have been talking to Colin about having social media about this because I know personally for me, I found out about my position through social media versus Eagle Mail or anything else. So. That's what we're working on it. If anything, I'm probably going to work on it right after this. <laughs> of course. Senator Baker. Thank you. Um, is should I work with you if I'd like to see some of these opportunities available for like the watch party or things like that on the Frisco campus? Yes, okay. that'd Got be very you. helpful because um, regarding the events, I was more focused about making sure what events are there. So any help with details about accessibility for people off campus, that would be very greatly appreciated. Excellent, of course. Thank you for your offer. Yeah. Alrighty, any other questions? If not, definitely reach out to Bucktober for anything. Um, all right, let's move on to the next item of the agenda. Thank you. All right, uh, we have our first bill submitted. S-2022 B-1 Senate Standing Committee event requirement was introduced by Senator Schulte and co-signers are Senator Garcia and our Chief of Staff, Katie Jimenez. I'm gonna pull that up on the screen. All right, Senator Schultz, you have the floor. Um, 
I'm going to ask that no one motions to move this as read because we had new appointments today. So. All right. First off, I want to say shout out to Casey because originally this was like six pages because this is my first legislation and also shout out to Krista because it is now down to two pages. So. OK, so S 2022 B1 Senate Standing Committee event requirement. Whereas Article 2, Section 1, Subsection A of the Senate Code of Conduct states senators shall be committed to helping their constituencies reach their full potential to build a better future for the University of North Texas. Whereas Article 2, Section 1, Subsection B of the Senate Code of Conduct states senators are compelled by their duty of office to act in the best interests of their constituencies through active representation and communication between the constituency, their respective deans, and UNT administration. Whereas the Campus Life and Environment Committee shall work towards the development of a campus environment that supports the personal, academic, and social needs of students. This includes physical environment, safety, security, campus dining, transportation, and other service areas directly impacting the overall quality of student life at UNT. Whereas the Diversity and Inclusion Committee shall address legislation referrals that were made specifically to identify and or resolve concerns relating to diversity and inclusion, as well as developing legislation specific to diversity and inclusion reform that is to the benefit of the UNT community. Whereas the internal Senate committee shall be charged with enforcing the Senate Code of Conduct. Adjudication of Code of Conduct referrals, assisting. Sorry, sorry my bad. Uh, uh, Code of the Senate on oversight functions and all other functions which pertain to the integrity of the Senate, whereas the Legislative Affairs Committee shall be charged with handling referrals related to concerns about the constitutionality of the of bills, the consistent review of governing documents to edit recommendations, and shall handle the other matters which are not explicitly accounted for in other existing Senate committees. Whereas the Student Senate and its committee should always be seeking new, better, and more effective ways to connect, advocate, and engage with undergraduate students whom they represent. Let it be resolved that all Senate standing committees should be held to the changes this document makes to the SGA bylaws to ensure that the Senate committees are actively meeting and are interacting with the undergraduate student body whom they were elected by to be representatives through modes of service, outreach, and enjoyment by planning one event each long semester. Let it be further resolved that the following additions be made to Article 1, Section 3 of the SGA bylaws. All Senate standing committees will be required to plan and hold one event each semester designed to engage and reach out to the undergraduate students whom they collectively represent. The event should be a minimum of one hour and correlate to the purpose of the committee as approved by a majority of the Senate officers and or the Speaker of the Senate. The time frame to host the event should be after the first Senate meeting of the fall and spring semester, but before pre-finals slash finals per university policy. Once the event has been approved, the committee should discuss resource needs with the Chief of Staff or other designated uh, executive staff. Let it be further resolved that the following changes be made to Article 1, Section 5 of the SGA bylaws. We're going to strike um, coordinate student coordinate student Senate events from. What is that? The part B and then we're going to add monitor the creation and progress of student Senate events initiated by the Senate standing committees. Respectfully submitted Senator Gracie Schulte, College of Science, Casey Jimenez, SGA Chief of Staff, and uh, Senator Daniel Garcia, College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. All righty. <laughs> Senator Van Voris. I motion we move to a period of questioning. Take all seconds. All right, it's been moved and seconded that we're a period of questioning. You have the first question. Okay, I have two questions. Um, so. In your second whereas, you state that um, it would be in the best interest of their constituencies. Why is holding an event going to be the best form of outreach compared to other forms of outreach for every committee? I just feel like there are some committees where this wouldn't be as applicable compared to maybe campus life or diversity and inclusion would benefit more from holding events every semester. 
Sure. Are the um, internal Senate or legislative affairs holding any events or anything or not events, but are y'all doing anything to reach out to constituents now? Well, no, but what I'm asking is the purpose of those two specific committees, internal Senate relates to internal Senate affairs yes. and legislative affairs is going to be more um, regarding um, bills and pieces of legislation, which any yes. constituent who is a part of a piece of legislation and or concerned um, is more than welcome to contact us at any time. I'm just wondering why an event per se would be the best means of reaching out to those constituents when it doesn't really make sense for an internal Senate committee to hold an event and or a legislative affairs committee to hold an event. And also these these committees are ever changing by administration. So I just sorry, I don't mean to be confrontational. I just am wondering your train of thought. Um, well, like I said, to my knowledge, the internal Senate committee and legislative affairs committee are not reaching out to constituents at all. Um, so, I mean, an, an event can be anything that they want it to be. It doesn't have to be like having food or like, it doesn't have to be like a silent disco event or anything like that. But I feel like there's plenty of, I don't know, activities, I guess you could say that the um, legislative affairs committee and the internal Senate committee can do to help interact with constituents and make SGA a little bit more known, I guess, like what we do known. Okay, and my second question is if this bill is passed, um, how is there going to be funding that's allocated and set aside in order to provide the necessary resources to host these events? Yes, David, can you scroll down? So on part C, once the event has been approved, the committee will um, discuss resource needs with the chief of staff or other executive staff. Right, but is there gonna be funding allocated through the chief of staff to prepare in advance for? That will be up to the chief of staff. Okay, no further questions, thank you. Senator Johnson. Or actually, Casey, you, you can talk since you're a co-sponsor. I know with my budget, I do have an events budget. Um, and as the Senate, y'all can direct us to use funds as needed. So if a committee were to decide to hold an event, um, y'all would go through a form of a budget proposal like I normally go through, and y'all would approve funding for it. Thanks, Thank Casey. Yeah. Senator Johnson. So let's, OK, so I, I do like this. I do think it is time we start holding uh, individuals accountable to reaching out to constituency. And I also feel like it is best, the best word of communication is word of mouth kind of thing. My question is, though, in like times being so chaotic as they are, let's say a committee plans the event perfectly down to every detail, but then something happens and it falls through at the end and they don't meet the deadline for the first uh, semester or second semester. What type of uh, consequences or because if this is in the bylaws, like what's going to happen to the senators on that team? Yeah. Um. Well, I feel like if the committee is planning an event, things would have to be pretty severe if they are not able to plan one for each semester. Um, I feel like that's where hybrid options come in because you can always do it online. And if something happens, you know, you can just go from there. Like but, what I'm referring to is like maybe the things that are outside the realm of possibility of the hybrid. Like let's say every committee does their job and there's not a specific amount for the event that they host and they make the budget reforms, the how unlikely it may be the discretionary fund uh, may go out, may run out, and the other committees don't reach that, or let's say something happens with UNT and it shuts down that day kind of thing, if they've already allocated stuff. You know, just like random stuff that could happen kind of thing. Okay, well, obviously, if UNT shut... Goodness. Um, if UNT, like, shuts down or something, like, if it's, like, a winter storm situation, um, I feel like, again, that's up to the discretion of the committee um, to reschedule and then... I don't know, have it, if they want to make a new event, have it approved. Um, I would hope that the committees don't wait till the very last minute. That way they have time to reschedule something if needed. Did I answer all of your question or was there another part? No, that was it. Thank okay, you. awesome. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I'd also like to highlight that with since the speaker, the speaker pro tempore will be more involved, that'll be the direct point of contact to your question. Senator Lee. Oh, uh, actually. Or, I Senator Allen, oh my God. 
yeah, next to each other. Sure. I apologize. It's been sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, just in response to like Grant's comment, I think we could add an addendum on. I think it was part N. I think of it, not N. What was it? Yeah, N. That we could add like an addendum stating like if there were like extenuating circumstances that a committee Point could not make. Yes. I, I do not believe this is a question. I believe this is a uh, discussion point she's oh, making. Yes, sir. Alrighty. Thank you so much. And I do agree. So if we have specific questions about the bill specifically, not more hypotheticals, that'd be awesome. Senator McDowell. So I think this is this is a good idea too. I was just wondering would you be willing to submit this to a committee? To look at it a little bit closer so we can get more eyes on it in a more uh we're in a in a setting where several people can focus on it a little closer yeah sure senator quibentoro oh my gosh hi ted <laughs> hi gracie uh mr speaker there have been several points brought up that could be addressed as amendments so i would like to move to refer this uh, bill. Yeah, this bill to the Legislative Affairs Committee. Senator Johnson seconds. All righty. Before uh, we. Point of... Yes. Sorry, I don't know if this is a point of information or point of order, but uh, Senator Vaughn and I both have our hands up. I I think we both have questions for for the authors. Um, Mr. Speaker. Yes. I think it would be appropriate since we're in a period of questioning to either exit out of the quest period of questioning to take another motion or to continue the period of questioning. Um, so on. for that reason, I I have a point of order that Ted's motion was out of order. Marnie, and it's it's been overruled or whatever. Uh, also, I'd just like to add that Daniel Garcia is on the call, um, and he was also like a co-author. So, Daniel, if you can hear me, you're more than welcome to answer any questions or do anything if you want to also. Thank you, right. of course. Um, Senator Brown. Um, this is a uh, point of information. I'm just wondering, uh, and most likely Casey or... Um, Senator McDowell will be able to answer this better. Uh, is the chief of staff one of the few executive positions that is uh, listed in the uh, Constitution or bylaws or any governing documents already? If I may speak, um, the chief of staff is listed in the Constitution. Okay. Under the SSF proposal. Okay, um, so my question for the authors is uh, one problem I see this arising is with um, the Legislative Affairs Committee and the Senate Internal Committee. Both of those are inward focused. And I'm just wondering if you guys think it would be an issue for those committees to take take their focus away from internal matters and focus on on putting these events every semester. I don't know if it's that's something that you guys thought about um, because I know the Legislative Affairs Committee or excuse me, the Senate Internal Committee met. Senator um, Cowell, do you uh, have a question? Yes. Yeah, that, my question is, uh, do the authors think that would be an issue for those committees? OK, just want to make sure. No, I don't think this would be a com an issue at all for these committees. If they're meeting regularly and doing what they're supposed to be doing as a committee, planning an event that's a minimum of one hour shouldn't be that time consuming or anything. And the event's up to them. Whatever they want to do, whatever they feel like, you know, is helpful to their committee, they're more than welcome to do that. All right. Um, Senator Lee. Thank you. Hi, Gracie. I really like this bill. I like the idea of holding committees accountable, as Grant said. Um, my question is, so with if David could pull up the document again. Of course I can. Um, yes, yeah, so under section N where it says, prior to plan and hold an event designed to engage and reach out to undergraduate students whom they collectively represent. Um, so I was wondering if that would um, 
include, say, if legislative affairs or um, the Senate Internal Committee held like an event for the Senate, something um, Senator McDowell has tossed out before is like having an event on like Robert's Rules of Orders or how to write procedure, if that would count as an event, because in my opinion, that would address some of the other things. So I just wonder if that is included under the wording or if it specifically has to be like for the student body just for students? No, because the Senate doesn't hold tabling or office hours for Senate. We're holding that for constituents. So like similarly, committees would be holding these events for like constituents, not in Senate. I also want to So add, it would or wouldn't count. I'm sorry. No. Just to add to your question about any workshops, that's something that where I definitely have discussed with your Senate leadership about. Um, thinking of having it next week, depending on how hefty, or you can definitely partner with Andy about that. If that's something the Senate's interested in more training, that's why he's the Sergeant at Arms. Um, I'd just like to throw that out there. Senator Guevara. Oh, I was going to have a follow up question. I can ask later though. I'm sorry. Yeah, Senator Guevara. So would this take place of the tabling hours for Senate? Uh, office hours that we have already established? No. No? So this would be like an add-on to that? So... Like one hour per semester? So office hours and tabling are specific to you as a senator. Mm -hmm. So this minimum of a one hour event is for committees. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Senator Ruiz? Hi, Gracie. Hi. Um, I just wanted to... My, my main question that I wanted to ask is just like SGA sometimes does mass events that in collaboration with other organizations, will committees be able to also collaborate with other organizations in order to create an event that, you know, might be a little bit more, uh, you know, mass uh, publicized or produced or anything like that? Sure. Yeah, of course. Whatever the committee feels like is best um, to reach out to constituents. All right. Just wanted to. So thank you. Senator Johnson. Uh, and then I guess this can be directed to any of the authors. Uh, when this uh, bill uh, was proposed, did you reach out to any of the committee heads uh, to say, would this help in terms of, because sometimes time consuming and getting yeah. centers commit is hard, but uh, did you all reach out and get their opinions as well or? No, I didn't. Um, I know some of our committees do meet regularly, so I don't think. Hashtag campus and environment, sorry. Um, to finish answering your question, some of our committees do meet regularly, so I don't think it would be an issue to plan a one hour event um, just once a semester. Um, but this also sets a precedent for our committees that don't meet regularly that they have to be meeting because this would be a requirement. Thank you. No problem. Senator McDowell. Um, just to sort of on to that question. Um, I think I remember meeting with you, Gracie, or not meeting with you, but talking with you about this. And I don't think it would be an issue for the internal committee, personally. Awesome. Thank you, Andy. Senator Luis? If there are no more discussion questions, I move for voting on this. Senator yeah. Banerjee's had her hand up. For oh, well. I'm sorry. Say, my bad. Also, point of order. Sorry. Go ahead, my bad. So remember, this is not under emergency status, so we can't vote. It's only a period of questioning. Um, so unless the Senate moves into merge status and something that can be considered, but I'm going to move on to Senator Bantry. Thank you. And thank you, Senator. You're good. Um, my question to you is, would you be open to working with the Legislative Affairs Committee and myself, maybe, like scheduling time to meet with us to tweak it to yeah, sure. Everyone's of course. It. Okay. Um, then I move. Oh, actually, I guess there's other questions. All right. Um, Senator Brown. Senator Brown moves to end the period of questioning. Is there a second? All right, it's been moved and seconded. Does anyone object? Point of information, yes. if we were wanting to table it into committee, would that have to be before or after the um, like after the period of questioning ends? Yes, yeah, so you can you can do any motions. Um, was there anyone object? All right, period of questioning is over.
Senator McDowell? I move that we move this document into emergency status. Senator Schulte objects. objects. Hard objection. Okay. <laughs> Senator Garcia objects. All righty, y'all. I understand that we have feelings, but let's make sure that we're being productive about it. Um, Senator Crematora? Uh, I move we refer this document to the Legislative Affairs Committee. Senator Brown Point seconds. Order. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Yes. The document can't have motions on it unless we're discussing it, which we're not doing because it's only being read at this meeting. So it'll be at the next meeting? Unless we put it into emergency status. Okay, so before we do anything, I do want to highlight the fact if this legislation is referred to any committee, that committee can kill it, make any changes to it. Just want to kind of highlight that to the authors, um, especially since Senator Daniel is still new and still learning that. Um, Senator Johnson. I'd also like to maybe ask if the if this would be an idea, if you could also include the committee chairperson, since we have to initiate in terms of getting wrangling the other senators kind of thing, because this doesn't, I think this isn't very specific on every senator must be what is participating in the committee kind of thing. So if it's up to the chairperson, whatever to put up, so I'm just like just be included in the conversation. Like that. I don't, I don't know what that would be. I would say you are included now as the whole body. Um, and you can discuss that next week during a period of discussion or debate. Alrighty. Period of questioning is over. I'm going to move on to the next item of the agenda. Thank uh, you. Next week. College reports. So, Senator Lee. First, oh my God, Senator Allen. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know why in my head I have you flipped, but it is. David's not okay. okay today. It's fine. Point, point of, I don't know what a point this is. Um, am I supposed to be on there as the Honors College Senator? I am so sorry. <laughs> yes. I said earlier, but I forgot to ask about it. Um, point of information also include new college. Yes, oh, yeah. I can definitely do that. Um, so. so. And then college after the college of information. Is it? Oh, wait, no, yeah, you're right. It is before uh, college of information. I just, I, it's, it's right, but it has college of, so it's not really alphabetical. Point now, of order, but, Mr. Speaker. Yes. I believe adding new college is a change to the agenda, which the Senate has not approved. Does anyone object? That is true. Um, does anyone object me changing this PowerPoint? All righty, then it's but going to be taken off. Point of, point of information, wouldn't that also include Honors College? Yes, we'll be removed both of them. Can we put it Is there vote? a second to that motion? McDowell seconds. All righty, then anyone object? Just having Honors College. Alrighty. All right, let's have the College of, An of Education come up first under Shiloh. Do you have any, again, if you don't have anything to report, you can just say nothing to report. But Senator Shiloh, the floor is yours. Okay, how about now? Okay, cool. So I have been um, reaching out to my dean's assistant to schedule an event. She has not emailed me back, so today I just reached out directly to Good? Okay, thank you. I have reached out directly to the dean, so I'll keep sending it um, up to date once we have our conversations, because I'm working with him on setting up events for college of education, traditions, so like annual events that we can have specifically for the college of education, and then um, talking to him about some possible legislation, because I've received a lot of complaints lately from my constituents. Um, also, as far, yeah, actually, that'll be all as far as College of Education. Any questions for the College of Education? All right, thank you so much. Move on to the College of Engineering. Oh, 
Hello, everyone. Oh, that is on there, huh? Okay, so I'll be giving the report for JD as well, unless JD, you want to uh, give yours. But um, he said for leg legislation involving more outlets at Discovery Park, which had been an uh, in area of interest last semester, there's already someone working on redesigning the furniture and outlets in the main hallways. Uh, there's a lack of outlets, which is bad when you have a bunch of computer science majors running around with their laptops. Also for Disco Parking, uh, the remote parking pass covers a lot of Disco Park, uh, meaning the uh, new, pet, new Disco Park pass would be kind of redundant. Um, transportation has mentioned that the parking that lot and so I think it's an issue of uh, outreach and things like that. I'm currently working very closely with some students regarding a issue with professors at Discovery Park, um, but that's all the information I can really give. Awesome. Any questions for the College of uh, Engineering? If not, just want to point out that it's labeled. Um, we have now next um, the College of Information. Senator Lee. All right. Hi, guys. Um, so for COI, I don't have a whole lot that has happened yet, but a lot that I'm planning. Um, I'm currently in the process of setting up a meeting with the dean, Dean Kinchuk. I met with him um, a lot last semester, and he really just wants to um, get involved and make sure that we're helping out our college. Something I especially want to discuss with him is online learning options as a majority of COI students are remote even prior to COVID. It, um, our graduate program in particular has one of the largest like online learning programs um, and they offer a lot of resources. So I kind of want to talk to him about um, some of the tactics that they use to connect with online students um, and see how we can kind of share that with other colleges, especially now as remote learning is becoming more and more common and something that a lot of students are advocating for. Um, and then another one of my goals is to get in contact with the Graduate Student Council. They actually have six senators, so it's one of the rare cases where they outnumber me by a lot. The graduate program of COI is very big. Um, so yeah, that's just my plan is to get in contact with them, see how they work, um, kind of just get inspired about how I can help COI. Any questions for the College of Information? Now, oh, there is. Yeah. Bella? Hi, Bella. Hi, Rachel. Where uh, GSC has six senators is what you're saying? Uh, for my specific college. Oh, wait, where'd you find that out? Um, I just Googled earlier, like Graduate Student Council College of Information. It's, oh, on their website. Yes, it's five senators for information science, one for library sciences. Thank for you. Linguistics. Alrighty. Um, now we have the Honors College, Senator Allen. Got it right. Hello. Um, so I guess it was technically two weeks ago now, but I did do some tabling for the um, non-traditional students uh, open house, and I was able to speak with um, a lot of the students there, not specifically for the honors college, but just to represent the student government as a whole. Uh, and that happened. And I'm currently working on trying to contact the president of the honors college. I've been a little forgetful on that. I do need to email them. But other than that, that's all that's really occurred. Are there any questions? No, thank you so much. Bye bye. All righty, the College of Liberal Arts and Social Sciences. Oh my God. Is everything okay? Oh. Sure. Everyone will remember that. <laughs> Okay, so pull this up a little bit. Oh, it's cool. Uh, so Senator Guevara has been working on partnering with the pa uh, Food Pantry Drive and collab with class ambassadors. Uh, it's she is going to be emailing Jennifer. How how you pronounce that? Pal Palik, I guess. Hmm. Pollock. Pollock and the liaison with the Dean Brown from last semester about ambassadors contacts info. I'm currently working on transportation and trying to get the UNT to kind of create its own 
bike share slash loan programs through donated bikes from alumni, students, whoever, to kind of hopefully get that bike share program back on due to the fact that buses are underrepresented, not underrepresented, are low staffing for drivers as well as severe, ugh, sorry, I can't talk, seriously understaffed uh, bus drivers and the overpopulation of buses for anything, honestly, during the times of COVID. Cause, and I did have a meeting with uh, William Donovan and Chris, Chris Williams on terms of getting that started. So that's kind of where we are, if there's anyone wants to partner with that as well, but that's kind of what class is working on. Thank you. Any questions for class? If not, we have the College of Merchandising, Hospitality and Tourism. The best college, just turn out there. Indeed it is. Hello, y'all. Um, if y'all don't remember last semester, I was working with um, a dean and some professor in my college on creating a movie night for my college where we would just have a good time and also collect, like ask for people to fill out a form detailing any concerns, issues, and like rating scale of our college so we can, I can get more information about what's going on. And so we're still working on that and we are possibly thinking of renting out a movie theater. So that is currently all that's been updated. So that is that. Thank y'all. Any questions? Senator Johnson. Would uh, the movie just be for it probably it will, it will probably just be for our individual college, considering that it's like a space, like running out of space, and we don't want too many people showing up and the movie's kind of more catered towards CMHT students. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? All right. Thank you, Luke. Arnie, the College of Music, Senator Cow. OK, I hope you guys can hear me all right. Uh, I am currently on the way to the Texas Music Educators Association Convention um, with basically the rest of my college right now. Um, and one of the College of Music student orgs, orgs actually received the Rob Travel Grant for the convention, which is super exciting. Um, we love but, that. The committee. <laughs> um, I'm planning to meet with my dean soon, not next week, but the week after. Um, the first thing we're going to be discussing is instating blind auditions for the College of Music, both in placement and acceptance. And then at the end of the month, I'm going to be assisting with degree interviews for potential incoming students. And I'm starting planning on a jury week relief event for my college, which will take place at the end of this semester. Any questions for the College of Music? No, awesome. The College of Science. Okay, so shout out Winston because he's my other College of Science Senator. Obviously he's new, so he doesn't have anything to report. But, um, okay, so lately um, I've been getting, and again, shout out Krista, shout out Casey, shout out David, Devin, freaking, y'all have no idea how much work that they put into being like, guys, like this is like, you need to update the seal. Like this isn't in accordance with the bylaws. Like this isn't in there. So I'm so thankful for them to like, I don't know, just help me have a better understanding of SGA. Just empowering you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I have met with or FaceTimed our new senators, um, Anthony, Daniel, and Winston, uh, to get to know them more, uh, offer help and advice and get feedback um, on my legislation that was Daniel. Um, I've sent some emails to admin and set up meeting times to discuss legislation ideas and logistics. Um, I met with Chris Lawrence. He's like in the rec center executive staff kind of thing um, to discuss possible changes to the rec center. Um, I've been in contact with Anna, Alyssa, and Daphne that are interns um, in order to get to know them, um, teach them a little bit more about the legislation process, get feedback. Um, honestly, I've asked them from an external point of view, what could we do to improve Senate? Um, and just getting to spend time with them. Um, been working on my own legislation, um, plan tabling times and days with Winston, and we'll be adding those to the Senate calendar. And that'll be all. Any questions? 
Thank you all. No, all right, thank you. Next up, we have the Texas Academy of Mathematics and Science. Ted, woo. I have to say the whole thing out from now on. All right, well, uh, before I get started, I wanted to give a shout out to the TAMS dodgeball team. We went to intramurals last night. We kicked butt. We went to finals. And we go. Um, with regard to the actual report, I received some reports from uh, my constituents that there was this organization called Southwestern Advantage going into like chem and physics classes, uh, taking up the professor's time, just like hassling students and joining this like weird internship thing. I looked into it and it seems like they're this sort of multi-level marketing type organization that's been banned from uh, Harvard, the University of Maryland, the University of Durham, bunch of universities. I don't think that's a good sign. And so I'm meeting with a Zachary Lee this week to hopefully draft some legislation that um, we can send to the administration regarding that. And that's all I got. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Ted. Cool. Alrighty, announcements. Alrighty, Krista. Huh? No. Hi, uh, Christopher. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Hi, all. Just wanted to reintroduce myself. I'm Krista. Uh, I am your advisor, and I do mm -hmm. want to emphasize our request to submit legislation early because hopefully, as I remember who was saying, thank you, Grace. Uh, my goal is not to shut your legislation down. My goal is to help you make it better. Despite my opinion about it, it doesn't matter. I want to make it good, even if I may not think it's the greatest idea in the world. And I'm not saying I didn't in this case. I'm just saying. So you all see that as a resource and that I'm not trying to be negative. I just want to give you feedback to try to make it even better so it stands the test of time. That is all. Thank you. Awesome, Chris. Um, do some training with Winston, Daniel, and Anthony this weekend, or so the senators that just got appointed, um, Kaylin and with you guys shortly. Hopefully, so watch out on your teams for a message from me. Awesome, Devin. Hey, y'all. So, uh, first of all, I wanted to give my appreciation for the work that Chris has been doing. Um, <laughs> Chris has been putting in a, a lot of work. We we, uh, we we sent in a commission document to, to her, and she had quite a few uh, recommendations that were quite helpful, and we're going to be reviewing those tonight, actually. Um, but in regards to the commission, um, the commission is had its second public hearing. We're trying to work on adding that um, that video to YouTube um, when we can, um, and we should be getting somewhat close to a finalized version of the commission documents. Um, after that, and after it's been introduced to the Senate, we'll have another public hearing. This is an intensive change, intensive document and senators are going to best understand this in an environment that's perhaps outside of the senate meeting where other business is being discussed uh, we're doing what we can to have hybrid and virtual options but i highly encourage senators to get to the last one so that they can ask any questions they might have or to speak on the issue should they wish to do so in a way that's that's appropriate and that's publicly available uh, but but outside of the regular business of the senate meeting so just wanted to emphasize that um, and I mentioned it earlier, I was online, but I'll do it again. Just wanted to appreciate uh, this, this executive staff for putting in a lot of work. Um, they didn't get paid for a, a, a fair chunk of it, um, but they put in work to help the student body through the winter storm, and I do appreciate the work that they've been putting in for the student body on that front. All right, any other announcements? 
Just announcements. We'll do shout outs afterwards. Announcements? Yeah, go ahead. Is it in order to appoint our new senators to internal committees? Yes. Yes, we can do that. Okay. Do I have to motion for it? or? Um, any more Is announcements before we move on? Announcements? Announcements. Go. Okay. I'll try to say this as quickly as possible so we can get to appointing our new senators to committees. But a couple of things. Uh, speaking of specifically the Senate's standing committees, could either the chair or co-chair of internal Senate committee and legislative affairs committee respectively add me to group me or teams or whatever group chat you guys use um because that'll really help me um i think it's just a lot more convenient on both ends to communicate that way um rather than me like reaching out for email and then waiting um and the other thing i said this in our chat but i wanted to say it like more publicly and accessibly and for the new senators as well um i have had like a lot of post covid lingering symptoms and um have just been evaluating whether or not I have the capacity to um, be the best speaker pro temp I can, um, especially with like the more active involvement that I want to be able to take um, and the responsibilities that come with that. So I just wanted to publicly say I'm, I'm going to be trying my best to now that I'm back. Um, be more actively involved, um, but yeah, I just wanted to say it publicly to kind of hold myself accountable and then I think maybe I could do a check-in at the end of the month with you guys and you can be honest with me if you think that like it, what I've started doing is enough or not um and take it personally I just I think you guys deserve someone who can dedicate the time and energy to make senate uh the best possible um and yeah that's it and also I have like brain fog so if I'm like ever spacing out or just not speaking as much just because I don't want to drag this on longer than <laughs> we'd like so yeah um, that's it. So, yeah since we're talking about Senate committees um, if you are meeting please make sure you're resending minutes any stuff to Saloni and I so we put up sites and the bylaws. This is like another fifth reminder. Um, and also, of course, add her to communication since she is the liaison with all committees and committee chairs. If you need any help with your committees, as one of her responsibilities, she can step in and put um, order as well. Um, Casey, go ahead. Hello. Um, so this Friday, I'll be giving the SSF uh, presentation for the Student Government Association's budget for fiscal year 23 as well as Eagle's Nest and Raup. Um, so if anyone has any questions or is curious about what that looks like, please let me know. I'll feel free to go through the presentation as well as um, the current proposal I have uh, that I've already submitted. Um, as well as the Athletic Councils tomorrow I'll be attending as well as uh, Sophia is also the appointment onto the Athletic Council. So if you'll have any um, questions that you'd like asked that's relevant about the Division of Athletics, um, please let us know and, and we'll bring that up tomorrow in our meeting. Thank you. All right. Announcements? Go ahead. All right. I'm actually really excited. Firstly, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm really honored to be a senator. That's honestly something that I'm really excited about, uh, which I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. So I kind of did a best case scenario that I do get appointed. Um, I already have something that I'm working on with uh, that I want my first um, point of action to, to be regarding uh, now that I am a senator. So I am part of, I am the co-organizer for the USPAAC. Again, that is the uh, UNT Student Professor Alliance Against COVID. We have uh, raised enough funds and we actually have in person 300 masks that we would like to, 300 KN95s and, um, and uh, M95s that we want to distribute to the campus. So I am publicly saying here to any senators who would like to collaborate with me um, in organizing a either event or something regarding uh, you know, a, a event, you know, to distribute said masks to the students who are in need of them on campus, finding a time, being able to do that. Or if you have anything, you know, you want to let me know regarding that, just speak with me after the meeting. Thank you. That's it. 
announcement, Devin? Another one? All right, go ahead. A little bit more <clears throat> business. Um, any of the, and Dave will probably send an email about this, but, and I'll send an email to, to the Supreme Court. Anyone who needs a headshot, email sjacom at unt.edu. Um, if you need a, and that's also true if you need a polo or a name tag, and then someone in the office, I, Colin's the, the point of contact. Colin's going to head it up, but if someone else needs to help you, we'll work it out. Um, and you might want to provide Colin with, ideal times that you'd be able to come by and then Colin can work with you on that. I'll yield to Andy. Did you have something on that? Yeah, I just want to say that uh, senators' pictures are on the website, so if you're a newly appointed senator and you want your picture on the website, like everyone else's, um, you have to get a headshot through Colin. Yes. Or some, some sort of headshot, but it'd probably be easiest to get it through Colin. Yeah, and, and you can see it. Right you can see it there. Uh, UNT's website really demifies these uh, these photos. So if you want like a full fledged picture headshot as well, uh, reach out to Colin and we'll try to get that for you as well. Uh, but yes, it will be posted to the website. Um, we we still have a little bit of work to do on, on a couple of the pictures, but we're getting there. Um, Colin's doing fantastic work on that, by the way. Um, and then. Casey mentioned SSF. Um, SGA is not the only thing that's going to be discussed. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be discussed. If you want to learn more about that, um, check out our social media posts. Um, you'll be able to, to uh, find the link to participate. And yeah, anyways, the new senators, um, if you will uh, talk to me, I guess, uh, Senator Baker, if you'll stay on the call um, and after the meeting. I'll just go over a couple of things with y'all as well. Sorry. <laughs> All righty. No more annou annou announcements. OK. It's not an announcement. If there are no more announcements, uh, I'd like. I'd like to move to amend the agenda to include a portion to appoint the newly appointed senators to internal committees. Senator Brown. Second? Senator Brown. Senator Brown, <laughs> I think he seconded it. It glitched out. Anyone object? Senator Brown nope. objects. Oh. <laughs> so there was never a second. Um, Senator, um, Senator Johnson? Senator Johnson seconds. Can we do Senator that? Garcia seconds. Okay. Point of okay. order, I believe it cannot be seconded after it's objected. That is true. Point of information. Can we move it to a vote? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Yes. Uh, since it was moved and seconded, but also objected to, you can't take yeah. it in. We do raise my hands right now. Yes. Okay. All right. All those ones to move to appoint new support. Anyone that objects? All right. It seems like the eyes have it. All right, we're going to move into our next item of the agenda is appointment of committee. So we have four committees. I definitely um, have a review with them. With our new senators that's on the screen as well. Um, the floor is open for any uh, nominations. You can nominate yourself, you're near yourself as well. Um, Senator Johnson. <laughs> uh, Shallow's not going to like this. But, uh, <laughs> I'd like to nominate all new senators to the Campus and Environment Committee. Is there a second? Senator Shiloh seconds. Um, do Senator Reese, do you accept the nomination? I accept nomination. Um, Senator Baker, do you accept this nomination? Uh, yes, I will accept this nomination. Um, Senator Garcia, do you accept? This is the Campus Life and Environment Committee, correct? That is correct. Uh, yes, I accept. All righty. All righty. Um, Senator Van Voris. That is correct. I'd like to nominate Ms. Ruiz for the Legislative Affairs Committee. All right, is there a second? 
All right, do you accept? I accept. Thank you. All right, any other nominations? Senator McDowell? I hate to do this to you guys, but the Senate Internal Committee is kind of ba based around, it's understaffed, yeah, but it's also kind of based around sort of parliamentary procedure. So with that in mind, I nominate Senators Ruiz and Baker to the Senate Internal Committee. Is there a second? Um, Senator Ruiz, do you accept? I accept. Senator Baker, do you accept? I accept. All right. Senator Garcia has had his hand raised. Uh, Senator Garcia. That was an accident. OK. <laughs> Any other nominations? Senator Banerjee, sorry. OK, sorry. I wanted to point out that Senator um, Mosley said that he has resigned. OK, so, so he said that you have more information about it, but he might have just emailed you. I don't know. But I wanted to say it mainly for the purposes of the committee because he was the chair of the um, diversity and inclusion committee. So if we wanted to have a, an election of the chair, can we do that? Oh, in the committee. OK, I wanted to clarify. That. Hey, y'all, if you're not recognized, please do not speak. It is late. I'm trying to make sure we're doing this in a very smooth process. Continue, Senator Banerjee. I just wanted to clarify whether or not we could do was the that. Election where was of that announced? Uh, he just sent a message in our um, committee group chat. Okay, he okay. Said, hey, you, I'm resigning. <laughs> David has the okay, rest of so the information. So here's, here's the issue. So sorry. Um, he did send me an email, it was his pre resignation email. Since I have not, and I've emailed him back, since I have not received an official status on that, he is still in Senate. Um, and I believe um, Santa is. Until he communicates back to me about any updates on that, um, he is still in Senate and he will still be serving on those committees. And I would encourage the Senate not to take any actions until we receive any communications from TK just to avoid any miscommunication, anything, because um, that happened in the past and I don't want to cause any issues. Um, all righty, any other nominations? Uh, yes. I nominate myself to the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. All right, is there a second? Senator Shiloh seconds. All righty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and vote on that collectively. Does anyone object to those nom? Oh, Senator Baker, go ahead. Sorry. I didn't realize we could nominate ourselves. Uh, I'd like to nominate yes. myself to the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. All righty, is there a second? Senator Shiloh, Senator second. Yes. seconds. All right, any, any more nominations? If not, I'm gonna approve that. Just wanna refresh. Go ahead and restate the committees that you were nominated, that you accept nominations for. Um, I accept nomination for the student. It was at the uh, campus environment and yeah. so it was the campus life and environment committee. I accept for the diversity and inclusion committee. I accept for the internal staff committee and I accept for the legislative affairs committee. So all four. All four. Does anyone object her being appointed to those committees? If not, you're appointed. Um, Senator Baker, do you mind restating the committees that you were nominated for? I'm looking at the list. Is it too late to change my answer on one of those? No, it's not. OK, then I accept uh, my nomination to the Diversity and Inclusion Committee and um, the Legislative Affairs Committee, the other one. Yes. OK, yes, then those two. And I, and I believe the Campus Life and Environment Committee as yeah, well. Yeah, that was the one that I just don't want to overextend myself. So I'm withdrawing my acceptance of that. And that's Apologies. totally fine. All right, so div yeah, that's totally fine. Diversity, inclusion, and internal Senate committee. Does anyone object? Um, Senator Baker being appointed to those committees? Nope, you're appointed. Awesome. Senator um, Garcia, do you mind restating which um, committees you were nominated for? I accept my I believe nomination. Believe campus life? Yes, it was the Campus Life and Environment Committee. Um, if it's not too late, um, can I nominate myself to another committee? You sure can. 
Okay, I apologize for the inconvenience. Um, I would like to nominate myself for the Legislative Affairs Committee as well. All righty. Um, anyone object? Nope. Does anyone object his appointment to those two committees, Campus Life and Legislative Affairs? If not, it's appointed. We're, all righty. Let's move on to shout outs, if any. All righty, Senator um, Schulte. I would just like to shout out, I guess, our Senate and, of course, Exec. Thank you for staying. Thank you to that one lone guest over there. Alex, shout out you. Thanks for staying. Um, we made it through executive reports, approval of minutes, unfinished business, five items of new business, and all of our college reports. And it is only 8.05. Look at us go. Okay. Just throw it out there. Second longest meeting, I think. I don't know if you remember the very first one. Oh, we got so much yeah, that is true. Um, Senator Shiloh. Yeah, interns aren't here anymore, but shout out to the interns that um, came out to the Campus Life and Environment yeah. um, we'll, meeting today, and they were very interactive, so excited. Shout outs, shout outs. You can just shout it out. No. Shout out to the new senators. Whoa, whoa. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, I'd just like to shout out all the senators. Uh, I'm seeing the energy, I'm seeing the activity, and I appreciate y'all. I'm excited to see what ha happens this semester, but that's it. Any other shout outs? Shout out to the class senators for having all seats filled. That's, I like that, it's cool. Yeah, there's but a lot I mean a big population for class, every seat filled kind of thing. Just, I'm just like, I'm not trying to throw. All right, I wanna shout out Senator Winston for being in person. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> finally get to see your face. All righty. And also I want to shout out personally to Alex for staying and covering our, our meetings. You did an amazing job. So shout out to you. Um, also, I want to shout out um, Senator, or not Senator, um, our commissioner of October for doing an amazing job with the calendar. Um, really having only two weeks to get that done. That is amazing. Um, um, also, I want to shout out Bella for an amazing turnout for your kickoff. Food was awesome. Um, and also, shout out Abigail's new hair. I love the bangs. Alrighty, sorry. I did, I'm in a very giving mood today. Uh, uh, any other shout outs anyone give? You can shout them out. Oh, I wanted to shout out Peyton's lovely sunset hair. I don't know. I was going to say this the other day in class. I just love your hair. It's very pretty. Shout out to Colin. He said, I'm an influencer now. <laughs> All right, any more? Shout out to Bella for doing the absolute most. Retweet. Shout out to the food that Bella had at the resource meeting. It was really good. The fried green bean. All right, any more shout outs? All right, any more? I'm going to give one more shout out. Um, I know I'm new, but this is like super exciting because I also live in Frisco. Shout out to Nick because he is our first new college. Woo! -hoo! Woo! That's so exciting. I'm really looking forward to working with you. And I, you. <laughs> All righty. Um, also want to give a shout out to Senator Banerjee. You're awesome. We appreciate everything you do. Also, if y'all don't know, she's one of part of UPC exec, hosts amazing events. Definitely go out and support. I helped MC one of her events, 1155 Live, this past Monday. So one more, one more shout out. Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, shout out BSU. Happy Black History Month, y'all. And we're having Whoa. events with Retweet. MC all month long. So come out to any of them. We have a lot of free food and free giveaways. Okay. Shout out back to you, David. He was a great MC. Y'all can get up. It's okay. <laughs> oh, fine. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Well, I mean, you could still get up. Executive. All right. But yeah, he was a great MC and he was really fun. And I just wanted to announce that because we see him in a very different setting, but yeah. Yeah, very fun setting. All right. If there's not any more shout outs, I adjourn this meeting at 8.09 p.m. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording.